Hi everyone, and welcome to Daisy Stalls. I'm sorry I made you wait so long for this video to come out, but here it is, part 2 of the stable process video. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, I'd advise you to do that first, and you can click the eye in the corner right now to watch it. And for those of you who have been eagerly waiting for this video, I won't make you wait anymore, so let's get into it. Now since I got the basic structure of the stable down in the first part, I want this part to be about creating the accessories and the overall vibe I want for the stall. I definitely don't want a very posh and high-end looking stable. I'm more aiming for kind of a rustic lesson barn kind of vibe, one that you would probably expect to see in your everyday life. So I have a pretty clear vision of what I want now, so let's go ahead and start crafting. Alright, I'll pick up where we left off last time, so let's glue in the stall dividers into the stable. I'm using regular wood glue, just like around 90% of the other things I glued in this project. Then I glue them in, making sure that everything is even and straight, and that the doors I made can fit over the opening. I wipe off any excess glue, then use an array of random heavy objects to keep the walls in place while they're drying. Then when those are completely dry, I remove the supports, then use some Loctite glue to glue in the bars for the sliding doors. I was honestly a little bit worried for the method that I used, but with some slight adjustments it worked really well. I installed the other one and was immediately very excited because all my hard work was finally coming together. However, the concrete looks a little bit cold and hard for the horses, so I decided I wanted to put in the shavings right away, even though that's kind of a final step, I just wanted to know how it looks. So I put some clean wood shavings into a food processor and blitzed it up to make it really small and fine. Then I put it in the stalls, and that was a great decision, because it already looks so good in my opinion. I think if your shavings are quite large, like mine were, it's a really important step to blitz them up to make them look more in scale. After that, I went ahead and put bars onto the windows, and I used very very similar techniques to the stall dividers. I basically made a wood frame in the dimensions of the window, drilled holes into the top and bottom, and inserted bars into it. Jumping back to the doors, the balsa wood strips are once again proving to be the MVP in this project. I used them to add little stoppers to prevent the doors from sliding too far out. Now, I'm getting out the pastels and the soft brush, which seems more reminiscent of a customizing video, but I'm using it to give the stable walls a more worn look. I'm using dark brown and black and adding it to the lower parts of the wood to look like water damage or just dirt in general. I'm adding some around the windows and on those white walls, which are bound to get dirty in a stable. Next, I made some cross ties for the wash stall using some 2mm ribbon and some metal hardware. I didn't film me gluing them in, but you'll see them later. Now, I also wanted to have lights in my stable, and I managed to hatch a pretty good plan on how to make them. So I actually used some pill capsules that I just cut out from the sheet, and then I lined them with green wire like this, and they look like really neat lamps. I really like how they look. I really really wanted these lamps to be functional, so using a ruler and a pencil, I am marking out their placement. Now I got out my dad's big boy drill and nervously started drilling on the lines drawn. It was extremely nerve wracking, but it was actually going surprisingly well. When I drilled the two holes, I just put some very simple fairy lights into the holes and they fit snugly in there so I don't need to glue them. These also have a plug and not batteries, which is nice so I don't need to worry about them running out. Anyways, then came the time to drill the holes for the second lamp and um... <laughs> So uh, yeah, I had a bit of a mishap. 
I had a really perfect streak of nothing bad happening so far, so I guess it was bound to happen, but this really sucked. The wood broke at several places and the wire bent, which really sucks, but I'm determined to fix it. And good news, I did manage, and even without replacing anything, I managed to just glue everything together and straighten things out, and it looks as good as new. Now, it's time to mount the lamps. Now, I used my regular old wood glue, which decided to spit on me, how rude. I guess my hand is now a glue palette. Anyways, I glue the lamps over the lights. And after some twists and turns, the lights are mounted and looking nice. Alright, now I'm going to shift gears and make some small details and accessories for the stalls. I cut a thin strip of soda can metal, then I poke two holes in it next to each other, with maybe 3mm in between. Then I use a thicker needle to bend it like this. Then I cut it off like this. And I inserted a small jump ring through both of the holes. And that makes a nice ring that you can hang on the wall to hang up hay nuts, buckets, cross ties, or anything else. Another thing I was really set on having is automatic waterers. So using Fimo clay, I form two little bowls in the correct scale. I add some small details to them. Then I bake them in the oven as the packaging instructs. Once they're baked and cool, I go ahead and paint them green and black. And this is what they look like when I glue them in the stalls, along with some metal accessories. I really, really like them. Now, I really like how the pastels gave the stalls kind of a worn and old look. However, I wanted something that had a little bit more texture to look like food or maybe some horse poop that got smudged on the wall. It's getting weird. So naturally, I went into my mother's cabinet and found some cumin powder. It actually smells really good. So I'm going to mix this with some water, glue and paint. Then I'm going to splash that around the stalls. You can't really see much in this time lapse, but I am trying to paint it in a way that looks like it occurred naturally. And this is the effect I achieved. Off camera, I also made these little door stoppers. They're pretty simple to make, so I'm sure you'll figure out how. Anyways, they're actually functional and they add a really neat detail. Now moving over to the wash stall area. I wanted a bridal rack like this one and my mind naturally went to a fish hook. So I went into my garage and found one and I cut off the ends. After asking dad for help, the very sharp ends are off and it's looking nice. Now I'm making a little rod for it to hang from. And I hung that up in the wash stall along with some other details. Here you can see I added some other hooks with some halters on it. I also added a light and some shelves in the corners here along with the rack we made. And also you can see the cross ties that I made earlier that I hung up on each side. Now I'm going to begin on the part of this project that will probably single-handedly take the most time, the feed and tack room. I'm going to start by making a wooden feed box. So I cut out all the pieces I need out of balsa wood. I assemble the very basic structure and again use random objects to prop it up while it's drying. Then when all the pieces are cut out and the basic structure is dried, I'm going to be using my staining mixture and stain all the pieces. After those had dried, I added some trimming off camera, and now I'll be adding the doors. I'm using these small hinges I believe I bought off AliExpress a while ago, and I use Loctite glue to glue them onto the doors. 
I'm also adding wood trimmings to the doors, mostly to disguise most of the hinges, which I had to glue onto the outside of the door. And when done, I glue them onto the box. And this is how it turned out. I add some dividers and shelves in there. And now I just need some feed to put in it. I learned the hard way that you should never use any type of real food in your stable. Disgusting! So instead, I made these tiny pellets by taking strips of tissue paper, covering them in glue and paint, then rolling them into snakes, and when they're dry, I cut them up like this. It would take forever to fill this box to the brim with all these tiny pellets, so I decided to cheat a little bit and just give the illusion of a full box. I had quite a lot of these paler type of pellets, so I'm going to color them a little bit darker to make a different type of feed. I used brown pastel dust and basically just rubbed it all over them. I poured those in the box as well, and they look surprisingly realistic. I'm super happy with this. You can assume I'm doing this with every other wooden object in this table, but I'm using pastels to add some dirt and stains. To really finish it off and make it as realistic as possible, I added some food labels, also some supplement containers, and a couple of more feeds. I actually have a video tutorial on making feed room accessories, and I'll link that down below if you want to watch that later. Anyways, I am really happy with how this feed box turned out. The feed room certainly needs a table as well, so I go ahead and cut out all the pieces I need for that. I stained all the pieces using a more yellowish tone this time, and then I am assembling it using wood glue. And of course, when it's done, I shade it with pastels. A little step stool seems to be a must in stables, so I go ahead and construct one with balsa wood. And like everything else, I shade it with pastels. And I gotta be honest, I'm really happy I discovered this technique, because it gives so much life and realism to the wood items. Next, I printed out a bunch of little posters and charts, and I'll leave a link to these if you're interested down below. Anyways, I'm going to cut these out. For the clock, I saw this really smart thing on Pinterest where someone used a button as the frame for the clock and it looks great. I wanted to have a couple of hay nets hanging on the wall as well, so I literally searched up on wikiHow how to make a horse hay net and I just followed those instructions in miniature. And like I did in the feed room accessory tutorial video, I'm using these small paint pots to make supplement containers. Before I add in all of the tiny breakable stuff into the feed and tack room, I'm going to install the light like I did before. And now it's finally time to add in all the stuff I made. I glue the feed box and table in place just because I know I want them there and not anywhere else and also to make them more stable. I made some of these props off camera and some of them I had from before. Regardless, I'd recommend you watch the feed room accessory video if you want to know how to make some of them.
And this is how it looks so far. I absolutely adore it. And I also really enjoy making this kind of stuff. Just adding and adding small details is my favorite. <laughs> this little box is one of those Kodak film roll containers. And it looks so much like a feed storage box. So I felt like kind of a genius when using that. Since this container is airtight, there is no concern for another infestation. So I did find something in my mother's cupboard. I'm not really sure what it is. Some kind of dried something. I don't know. <laughs> However, obviously we're far from done. This part of the room is looking very empty. So let's go ahead and make some more stuff. A first aid cabinet has been an iconic addition to most of my stables. And this one is no exception. So I cut the pieces I need out of balsa wood and glue them together. I add some hinges and a door and then it's time for paint. I also added a green first aid cross to the door. My camera cut off right when I finished it, but you can probably imagine what it looks like. To increase the storage room in the tack room part of the room, I made this simple shelf with a bench. And to finish it off, I add some wood trimming to make it look nice and neat. I of course also needed some saddle racks. So again, using balsa wood, I cut out all the pieces I need and assemble them and they look pretty neat in my opinion. I believe Desktop Stables has a tutorial for these, so I'll leave that down below if you're interested. I was really focusing on adding a lot of detail like everywhere in this room, so I printed out some rosettes, which are a great way to add detail. To be honest, I did most of the crafting for the tack room off camera just because there was so much back and forth, so I basically just gave up on filming Anyways, I assemble some of the rosettes on a piece of wood like this. Oh, Mrs. Cat Stable Inspector is back. Anyways, this is what the tack room looks like right now. You can see I added in the medicine cabinet, the shelf, and the rosettes, along with a lot of other stuff. From this point on, I basically added everything off camera. So I'll actually see you guys when the stable is complete. March 1st was when I started to plan on this project and then I finished it the 15th of May. This project has honestly been a journey and it's definitely the biggest one I've done so far. I thoroughly enjoyed this project though. It's definitely one after my own heart. However, I did kind of overwork myself at times, but in the end, I think it was worth it. I'm so happy with the result and I can't wait to have this barn for hopefully many years. I did use several tutorials from desktop stables for the feed and tack room, so I would definitely recommend that and I'll put a link to her down below. I also want to thank you guys so much for all the support on the previous video and I'm hoping this video as well. Thank you all so much, it's been honestly a bit overwhelming. Anyways, I'm going to be quiet now and you can just enjoy the slideshow.
Alright, so we're nearing the end of the slideshow. I want to hop on again and thank you all so much for watching this series. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know down below what you liked about it if you did. Stay tuned for more content using the stable. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye!